Sanjin asks, how to fill large increment? Hello, I have two questions regarding the same spreadsheet. Let me make a small example first. So then he provides us some data. So in column A, we have a date with an hour with an increment of one hour each time. Then in column B, we have a value associated with that date time value. And then in column C, we have the individual dates without their times. And so now what Sanjin is trying to do is in column D, he wants to display the max value associated with that uh, date. Now he's trying to do this by automatically pulling through using the autofill, uh, but yeah, the autofill does not uh, correctly skip 23 uh, rows at a time because autofill automatically will skip one value. So that's not entirely the right way to go about this. In a moment, we'll see how we can fix this issue. And then in column E, he wants to uh, display the date time value where the actual maximum was reached. Okay, well, let's see how we can help. I made a recreation of the data set that Sanjin provided. As you can see in column A, we have the date time. In column B, we have a random value between one and two. And then in column E here, I have placed some dates for which we want to find the maximum value and also the maximum date time. Now, how to do this is that we should first convert these date time values to a date value. Now, the way we are going to do this is through the usage of the date function. And so with the date function, we supply to it a year, a month and a day and out comes a date. So now we must be able to extract the year, month and day from this date time value. For this, there are a couple of formulas we can use. And so they are pretty easy to remember. The first one is the year formula. We simply supply a date time value to it and out comes a year. Same thing for month, as you can see. And lastly, we also have the day function, which works exactly the same way. So for this first day time value, we get the year 2021, month one, that's January, and the first of January, that's the day. So now we will be inputting this into a date function. So let's start this by writing in cell C1 equals date. And then we need to supply three arguments. Like I mentioned earlier, the first argument is the year. So for this, we will be using the year function. Then the second argument is the month function. So we supply the exact same uh, cell as we did to the year function. And then we use the day function just like this. And we close the parentheses. Now, as you can see, I'm getting this uh, a list of hashtags. Don't worry, that just means that the current spacing of the column is not wide enough to display the contents. So we can double click in between column C and D to widen this column so we can actually see what's going on. So now all we have to do is to actually pull this through. So I simply double click here in the bottom right hand corner to automatically uh, list this for every single date. And so we can see if we scroll down a bit, you can see it actually works because here we are at the 2nd of January and you can see the date has also changed. Okay, so now what we're looking to do is to find the maximum value here in column B associated with a certain date. So for the 1st of January, we're going to write max ifs. Now Sanjin already proposed a solution using the max function, uh, but the downside of the max function is that you cannot supply any criteria to it, while you can do that with the max ifs function. So with the max is function, we first have to supply a max range. That is a range where we want to take the maximum from. So in this case, that would actually be the value here in column B. So that's what I will be selecting. Next, we have to supply a criteria range. So that's where we are going to check for a certain criteria. In this case, the criteria is that the date must match the current date, right? So the criteria range will be column C, where we inputted the new date value associated with the date time. So I select that entire range. And then lastly, the third argument we have to provide is a criteria that we are going to apply to this criteria range. So in this case, it much must match the current rows date. So I select the current rows date here in cell E1. Now I close the parentheses and I also make sure to fix my references to absolute references by placing dollar signs in front of the letters and the numbers using the shortcut F4 so that when we pull this through and use the autofill option, it will actually keep referencing these same ranges and they will not be shifting down. Now, we of course keep relative referencing for cell E1 because we want that row to actually shift down. So I press enter and we can see for the 1st of January, 2021, the largest value we found, found was 1.97. Now we are simply going to pull this through by double clicking here. And so we can see 
this actually still works. You can see the cell has shifted down. So this is the end result. Okay, so now we want to find the hour in which this largest value was found. So we can do this using an xlookup function. So with an xlookup function, we will be supplying a lookup value, meaning what are we looking for? Now, in this case, that would actually be this maximum value. However, that is not sufficient because we want to look across our entire data set. And so this 1.97 could also occur at other dates. So we have to concatenate uh, this piece of string, this 1.97 with the date. So I select also the date. And so now we're putting this 1.97 together with the date. And on this combination, we are going to search in our data set. So next up, we need to provide the lookup array. And once again, we will have to concatenate it because that's also what we did with our lookup value. So the lookup array is where we are going to be looking for our lookup value. Now, in this case, the first um, range we have to select is this column B here because that was also the first lookup value we su supplied, right? The value, which was in F1. So in column B, we find this value and we are going to concatenate this with the date column. Just like that. Okay, then we need to say, okay, what do we wish to return? Well, that would be the date time value in column A. So that will be the return array. And that's really everything we need. There are some optional arguments we could provide. So for example, like the if not found method. So that will indicate if we cannot find a certain date. So let's say we extend this and the date is not yet in our time range. Then we can give an optional value saying, okay, we didn't found it. And there's also the option to use the search mode. The default option for the search mode is that XLOOKUP starts looking from the top to the bottom. So if there's two 1.97s on the 1st of January 2021, it will actually take the first hour. Let's say you always want to take the last hour, then you can change the search mode uh, to enable that. But in our case, I think this is sufficient. So I will be closing the parentheses pressing enter. And so we get this strange um, number here, but don't worry because in Excel dates are just a number of days that have passed since the 1st of January, 1900. So this value indicates there, there are 44,000 days that have passed since the 1st of January, 1900. And so this decimal then indicates the hour. So we can simply convert this. How I will be doing this, I will be copying the format of cell A1 using the format painter. So you can find this under the clipboard group in the home tab in the ribbon. I click on format painter and now I will select the range where I want to paint this format. So that's over here. Once again, we're getting these hashtags. So we have to enlarge the column. And now we are simply going to be pulling this through. Of course, before we pull through, we first have to fixate our references for the ranges. So that would be this B1 to B72. I use the F4 shortcut to place these dollar signs that will fixate these references. Of course, we do not fixate the reference here for our lookup values as we want those to shift down. So I press enter and I pull through. And so we can see the different moments in time when this maximum value was reached.